Okay, so Dharma talk of the first day of this summer retreat 2017 based on the song of the Vajra. Mm. I forgot to mention yesterday, probably some of you have are aware of it, but this is the ninth year of the summer retreats. Um, and the first one here. Um, <clears throat> the Song of the Vajra, it's a very simple and short text, as you know. Just what, maybe 30 sentences in English, about half a page. Um, and yet it um, nicely summarizes and explains the Chokchen view, the view of the Chokchen teachings, the view of um, non-dualistic uh, philosophy. Unborn, yet continuing without interruption. Neither coming nor going, omnipresent, supreme Dharma. Those first two sentences already contain quite a bit. Yesterday I mentioned something in the in the opening talk uh, that it is essential to know um, how to practice correctly. How to it is essentially to essential to um, understand what are the elements of the mind and what are not. So <clears throat> maybe I'll say something on that. Um, so the way how it's quite clearly explained is that the mind, our self-delusion, can be divided into the next elements. So the first one is the sense of self, subject self, that is located here behind the eyes, if it is if it is still there. That's number one. Then there is the inner talk, the chit chat machine, the uh, radio station that is always on, associating to different kinds of ideas and thoughts that is located here in the mouth and throat and jaw area. And as you might have noticed if you haven't practiced it before, uh, yesterday and today when we've done it, the chit chat becomes silent when we relax this area consciously. So that's number two. Number three is located in the heart area and also to the whole body area, that of emotions. So <clears throat> when there is an emotional reaction, some emotional impulse, um, and there's attaching to it, identifying with it, it is felt in the heart area and in the whole body area. So, in the mouth area, thoughts, in the heart and in the body, emotions. That's number three. Then we have the um, subconscious mind, which means that stuff that is below the surface of conscious awareness. 
below the surface means that there is sort of like a lid on it and this subconscious means under the lid and the lid figuratively speaking is located here in the solar plexus so um, this can be experienced if you start watching your thoughts uh, you can notice that these thoughts and emotions they come up in our body space they come come from somewhere down there they just appear into the conscious field where we can notice them so <clears throat> this subconscious mind our personal subconscious mind is related to the solar plexus the stomach and also to the whole body in general especially the limbs and it's because the subconscious mind relating to the uh, first six boomies uh, is related to the energy system in the limbs that's why in tibetan heart yoga we take these uh, centers in the in the limbs into consideration and in the practice so that's was it four number four one two three four that's four and then there's the fifth one which um, often in english is rendered as substrate consciousness i suppose it could be a good term for it is also deep subconscious mind so subconscious here in the belly and solar plexus and deep subconscious which is not inside the body area it is the the main center of it is below the body like about half a meter below the torso and mm, relating to the bodhisattva bumis uh, this center main center that is located below the body below the torso has channels going like tentacles of an octopus going to the all of the four limbs and to the pelvic floor and to the heart so this substrate consciousness or deep deep subconscious mind is what is mentioned in the vimala mitra semjin material as well um, alaya vigyana or kunchi in tibetan and the reason why i like to separate um, subconscious mind and deep subconscious is that they are slightly different in tone um, mm, you will notice the difference when you get to work with when you reach the sixth boomy and when you get to the seventh boomy you can notice that the terrain that you're working with is different somehow it just is different and when you get to the mahasita boomies open all the bodhisattva boomies then you can again notice how different the subconscious and deep subconscious are but maybe just the main main feeling of the deep subconscious is that it's like these thin gray veils gray veils so and it affects um, your being in the way that you might be dull even though the mind is silent even if you don't have thoughts and emotions and the mind is silent you can have these underlying veils of dullness uh, boredom uh, kind of depressing depressing um, um, i'm looking for a word for liemi what will liemi in english huh 
stock. Yeah, like this underlying stock. When you have soup, there is this liquid there, this underlying gray stock. So that's five. And then there's the sixth one uh, that the Song of the Vajra is talking about. That which is unborn, yet continuing without interruption, neither coming nor going, omnipresent Supreme Dharma. So the sixth one is awareness itself, knowing awareness, which doesn't come and go and is continuous. So, if we think of these five elements, and then the then this sixth one, which is like an underlying, um, should I say, principle, underlying, uh, unchanging principle, what the spiritual path is about um, is making our way or making sense and bringing clarity to all these all these uh, samsaric elements of the mind i sometimes i remember like a couple of years ago i was thinking of the analogy of being lost in the center of a jungle so jungle that is um, you know jungle it's fully grown there's uh, trees and bushes and all this stuff it's you know it's very difficult to walk there it's difficult to know um, where to go it's difficult to get directions in there so it's sort of like um, if and when we are very confused in our samsaric mind um, within these five elements um, it's very descriptive to being lost in a jungle have you guys seen the tv shows where are these these um, like ex-military special forces guys who are dropped into some jungle or some um, northern very extreme conditions or mountain areas or something and they have to know how to get out from there without much tools or maps or compasses have you seen those shows shows yeah Stafford, yeah 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 yeah. So, Dharma practice is and should be like that, to offer the know-how, how each of us can get out from the middle of the jungle. Uh, and when we know the general elements and principles that are concerned just as I explained and I didn't even give a long explanation uh, it helps tremendously So if we think of the natural state that is talked about in the Song of the Vajra, described in this text, uh, it is very easy to um, 
um, I don't know if it's the correct word, I think it isn't, but it's easy to validate that this description of this text is correct. We somehow recognize when reading a text like this that yeah, this is talking about something that we already know somehow. We can intuit that it's correct. Uh, do you agree? Do or disagree? I always had that that kind of and probably you too, this sort of like an intuitive recognition when reading some non-dualistic teachings. Uh, Non-dualism is taught in uh, Buddhism and Hinduism, probably other religions as well. Uh, but I think that the trick really is to have the basic know-how, how you can get from the jungle to a village or get away from the messy jungle. Because if you are left, if you are there in the middle of the forest, uh, and even if you have the Song of the Watcher with you there, you can read it unborn, yet continuing without interruption. Okay, yes. And so on. It makes sense to you, but if you don't, don't have know-how, uh, it can be like another good analogy is that if you want to learn mountain climbing or wall climbing you have to go through a course and learn how to use the tools and techniques you learn have to learn how to climb where to take hold of and so on but if you don't have that know-how it's like you are brought to the steep wall and are said, climb. It's very difficult. And any non-dualistic teachings are like that. Some we can uh, directly understand and recognize, maybe even ha have glimpses when reading texts like the Song of the Vajra or, or other many, many, many non-dualistic texts. Uh, but mostly the, the real and true depth of the teaching can only be revealed through um, studying it and through practice. And to practice we need to know some es essential things, to make sense of things, to understand things, to understand our mind and samsaric condition. Immutable space, beyond definition, spontaneously self-liberating, perfect state without obstruction, manifest from the very beginning, self-created without location, with nothing negative to reject and nothing positive to accept, infinite expanse, all-pervading, immense and limitless, unbound, with nothing to dissolve or to be liberated from. 
perfect state without obstruction, with nothing to dissolve or to be liberated from. So this basic state, or what is called as Vajra here, Vajra means diamond or indestructible, something that is indestructible, perfect state without obstruction. It is perfect already and is not now and has never been obstructed by, hindered by anything. Uh, just recently I was changing messages with a, a teacher colleague from Rinzai Zen Buddhist tradition, which, which is non-dualistic tradition, um, about the fact that, like this text also states, perfect state without obstruction with nothing to dissolve or to be liberated from. So it describes the nature of the mind, our natural state. And sometimes it happens that some people are too hasty with this view. So it happens sometimes that people fall in love with this view of perfect awareness that is perfect already and there is nothing that can be done to it, no practices, no path, no gurus, no attainments, no awakenings, no insights, no... get way too hasty with this view, not understanding that uh, if you are right there in the middle of the jungle lost in the center of Amazon, it's just a conceptual misunderstanding if you think that you are not lost. Right? So this can definitely happen. This, uh, And I've seen people who have practiced some for decades who are, who are in this trap. And my, this Zen teacher friend, uh, he was talking about the same thing. Uh, in Zen Buddhism, there is this one school, Soto school, who do this just sitting meditation. Just sitting, Shikantaza. And they just sit. And what can happen is that uh, he, he uh, expressed it kind of humorously when he said that people who misunderstand it, who are too hasty, um, can just actually end up sitting there. Like a, like a being in a limbo in their mind, believing that they are doing the practice correctly, but it's not even close. So so there you have it. In, in Soto Zen Buddhism, the view is also very simple and the practice instructions are very simple. Sometimes just shut up and sit down. And then you might sit for years doing retreats and you're just sitting there, not understanding what you're really doing. Uh, if you're lucky, getting glimpses by uh, coincidence, but mostly just sitting there. If you're not having thoughts and emotions, then bello, uh, casas, just mumble. No. Just stuck in this mud of deep subconscious mind. So, so like in this blank state that is muddy. Drifting with the waves. Uh, no, 
that's what we need. So stuck with the muddiness, with this grayness. That is silent but not clear. It is often said, and always actually said, in uh, by the Chokchen tradition, uh, that you do need a teacher or a guru who shows and explains you things. Um, I certainly can testify for that. I certainly agree with that statement. Um, if we think that somebody would be um, training alone or training with somebody who, who is not perfectly certain of the natural state and know uh, techniques and ways to for its recognition, uh, it's like a lottery in that case. It really is, because um, it's easy to make sense of and clarify thoughts and emotions. But when it comes to these thin veils of deep subconscious mind, substrate consciousness, those are really tricky. Really, really tricky. Just this morning after the breakfast I went outside and I was watching the sky and there was this higher atmosphere clouds that are like very thin veils. I often use this analogy as well, that when you are watching those high atmosphere clouds, sometimes you cannot be sure what is the blue sky and whether, whether there is a, a veil there or not, cloud there or not, or perhaps even several cloud layers. So the substrate consciousness is exactly like that. It subtly um, puts artificial coloring on top of awareness. But uh, once you have had a glimpse, like a proper glimpse, conscious, conscious glimpse of the natural state, then um, through awakening, then you know how it is how clear it is and how, should I say crisp, does it make sense? How crisp and fresh it is, how delicious it is. So, uh, you do need uh, someone who knows it and can transmit it. Uh, you do need someone like that. I certainly wouldn't have, like, a, I've studied with many teachers from many traditions, was in a Zen monastery for a while and studied Zen, but mostly, and of course I had Sivakami, who was my uh, heart teacher, uh, and she helped, helped me a lot with, with many kinds of things, one of which was uh, has to do with um, communicating and opening the opening the ability to communicate with non-physical masters. Sivakami helped help, help me a lot with that. Uh, but mostly it, it has been non-physical masters like Padmasambhava, Machik Labdron and several others who have clarified things like this that I've been talking about to you dur during the last decade. So I certainly testify that, that if I didn't get all the transmissions and pointing out sessions, uh, I couldn't be talking, talking about these subjects. Uh, I wouldn't have much to say if I, if I was only expanding on what I, I've learned from the physical teachers that I've had. 
so yeah, I do think uh, that Guru Yoga that we are practicing with Padmasambhava, sometimes with others when we have time, it's essential because you can get the transmission directly from the master yourself. Right? I kind of don't feel like talking today much, so let's sit for a moment together before the break.